hello viewers hello hello everyone hello again hello hello everyone happy blessed saturday to you all happy blessed saturday to you all i am back again today to to talk on a very 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 interesting topic which i believe viewers will be able to bless how is everyone doing i am fine i am great i am grateful gratitude to the almighty thank you for all of you that have been joining this forum god will increase god will bless so i'm waiting on viewers to start coming then we can just go straight to what we want to discuss So how is everyone? How is life wherever you are? As for me and my family, we thank God for a new life, new opportunity, and all what God has kept for us in store. So I just want to be grateful to God for a new day, new life, new opportunity. We cannot take none of this for granted. We just want to acknowledge God. We just want to thank God for all he has done in our lives, daily activities, daily things that we do every day back and forth. I want to be thankful, gratitude to my loved ones, my family, even God up there. I just want to be thankful. So we thank God for this great day today, which is Saturday, the 22nd day of October 22. I just want to be thankful for the life Others cannot mark today, but because of the grace of God upon my life, my, my loved ones, my family, and all those who I believe are part of our life, I am grateful. Because life, we, can, we cannot predict the life ahead of us. We cannot tell ourselves tomorrow, but it's about today. Because there is no tomorrow, we hope for future. But the future is not in our hands, but the hands of God. So I just want to be grateful for everyone that one way or the other that have joined this forum every day. I want to be grateful for your life, the life of your family, your loved ones. I pray every day for you, for God's um, grace upon your life and the life of your family. I stand in the gap every day for you guys because without the gospel of Jesus Christ, there's nothing on this earth without god in general not only christian even the muslim without you having god in your life is nothing but today our topic is going to be based on without christ i'm talking in terms of um um most christians because i don't have um license to talk anything about the other religion so i just want to base my 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 point on this religion because this is what i was called for I don't want to say anything, but without God, there is nothing that we can talk about. So today we are going to just praise. I love to praise and it's not about the voice, but just to praise God because God has been good to all of us. Even a day, we have to be graceful. Hey, Miss Stevens, how are you today? Thanks for joining long time. Hope everything is fine. You and your daughter and husband. So I want to be grateful for God for today's that uh, date, which is the 22nd, and the month gone so fast. Happy birthday to all those who are celebrating their birthday today. I pray for increase in your life, more abundance, more grace, more wins. God will open many doors for you. Whatever your wish is, God will meet you at the point of your needs. God will take you places. Your plan on this earth God will manifest that plan on, on your life. What God des designed you for on this act, it will come to pass. Your life will not just be based on this act, but even eternity. Whatever God has placed you for, you'll be able to do it and manifest. Thank you that God has made everyone to see this day. This is the day the Lord created. We rejoice and be glad in it. How are you, Kelly? Mara, thanks for joining. God bless you. So today our top topic is life without Christ. 
we are going to look into that and a lot of Bible verses so that we know where we can stand in the things of God or where we cannot stand in the things of God. But before we start, let's praise. I love to praise. It's unfortunate I do this forward alone by myself, but we are expanding. A lot of great people will be coming in this forum to give you guys admonition about the things of God for you guys to know more. But we are planning by the grace of God soon. This forum is going to be big by the grace of God. When God wants this forum to go beyond my expectation, it's going to happen. So, but I thank everyone every every Saturday that joined this forum. And I know our journey is not going vain. If everybody take into practice what the Bible says, you don't worry about the preacher. God said, whatever is in the Bible, a preacher preach. When you listen to that word, and when you do according to it, there's a lot of benefit. So when preachers stand to preach, we are not preaching the word that is out of the Bible. Every word according to the Bible, we cannot omit, we cannot add. So every word that we preach out of the Bible is what God says. So we have to take it very, very serious and try to apply it in our lives and do many things with it. So we are going to praise now and wait for viewers to start coming. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit and my spirit praise his name even that even that could not hold him captive even in thy grave Jesus, you are Lord, even in thy grave. Jesus, you are Lord, my soul, my soul, magnifies the Lord. And my spirit, and my spirit, praise his name, even that. Even that who not hold me captive, even in thy grave, Jesus, you are Lord. Even in thy grave, Jesus, you are Lord. Ancient of days, as old as you are. As old as you are, your way never change. Ancient of days, as old as you are, as old as you are, your way never change. Ancient of days, ancient of days, as old as you are. As old as you are, your way never change. Ancient of days, as old as you are, as old as you are, your way never change. It is well, it is well. With my soul, with my soul, it is well, it is well. With my soul, your name is Yahweh, your name is Yahweh, you are the miracle world. Something new in my life. Something new in my life. Do something new in my life. Oh, Lord, do something new. Do something new in my life. So. Something new in my life. Oh, Lord, we cannot 
leave. We cannot live without you, Lord. We cannot live without you, Lord. We cannot live without you, Lord. Oh, Lord, we cannot live. We cannot live without you, Lord. We cannot live without you, Lord. We cannot live without you, Lord. Oh, Praise the Lord. We give God all the glory as we honor his name. Thank you for everyone that is here today. One Waya or Salim. How are you? Good afternoon. Hope I pronounce your name well. Thank you for joining this forum today. God bless you. Let's commit our words today into the hands of God. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for all those who have joined this forum today. Lord, I pray that their joining will not go in vain. I pray whatever we are about to discuss in this forum, Lord, it will not go in vain. I pray they will be a hearer of the word and a doer of the word. I commit this forum today into your hands that, Lord, you will come and breathe your breath upon us. You will come and have your way today. You will use the servant of God mightily that your name will be glorified. I cover every word about to said with the precious blood of Jesus. Everyone here today, I cover their loved ones, their family with the precious blood of Jesus. Father, come and have your way. Bless the word today. Bless the servant of God and everybody that is here. I thank you, Lord, for a new day, new life, new opportunity. This is the day you have created. We rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, thank you for your presence. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for the word. Father, I thank you. I commit this word that you will transform these words in their lives and make their lives transform. Father, I thank you for today in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you everyone that are, that are here now. And those who I'm unable to see, thank you. Shalom to all of you. Thank you in this forum. God bless you as you are here. So today our topic is going to be based on life without God. Meaning life without Jesus. So we're going to look basically in some of these scriptures to see what we can make out of uh, the word today. And how we can apply it in our daily activities in our life. Ten chances to one, I will tell you. A lot of people that are living without God. When you go and check them, there is no happiness. A lot of them will tell you, I am happy, I'm satisfied with what I have. But we all need God in our life. We need Jesus to be part of us. We need God to be part of us. We need to speak the things of God in our lives daily. Waking up from bed, going back to bed. We need to prophesy. If you don't know the things of God, you are novice. You do. Because the devil... Is, is, is going to do whatever he wants with your life. Many things we see happening in many, many great people, their lives. Many people that we see, hello, Mr. Suare, how are you? Thanks for joining. God bless you. Many people that we see many things happening in their life, it's not them. But when you give way to the devil, your life is in their hands. That's why I came up with this topic, life without God. Or life without Christ in general. Because Christ came to, to, to fight our battle. Christ came, died for us. And we are still living. So I would say life without Christ. Because a lot of us give our life and we say, I give my life to Christ. So we are discussing this. When you look in a home, if there is no God in that home, that home is not settled. I will tell you this. People will say, oh, this is my life. We don't worship God. We don't go to church. We don't go to the mocks. Or we don't do all these things. But God is blessed and things are happening. Yes, the devil gives so much. But when, he ready to, when he's ready today to strike to take, he will take everything from you. That's how you know life without God. It's meaningless. For me, when I was growing up, I love Christ. To where I am, many things I will know that this is not good because it's not of God. But I will still do anyway before I became a preacher. But after that, when I know some of these things, when you don't know the word, you don't know about God, many mistakes. But when you know God, we all struggle with things in our lives. Men of God, women of God, we have our struggles. But we still pray to God, some of those struggles, to go away. But life without God 
It's meaningless. So we are going to look in some verses. And then let's see what we can get out of it. We are going to, we are going to look into many things. And I would like everybody, don't look at the words. Take some things. Take some um, um, jotties, like some Bible words. Keep them. Many times you are able to read them to your children. These things, when we come in this program, we take our time. Holy Spirit will give you word. Talk about this. Maybe one word you will talk about it hundred times because the world we live now, Jesus said we should go out there and, and, and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and tell them about his coming and tell them about the things. We have to repent. Everybody needs to be, we, all of us, we need to come in one table for our redemption to give our life to Christ. Because when we see the world itself, the things that are going on in this world, fear needs to come upon us. If everybody that live, all of us that live in, we see so many things going on, there is no fear in you, then there is a problem. We have to have fear. You watch news, you see some things, you worry. We need to have fear. Because when you fear, that begins the wisdom of your life. You know that these things that are happening is not ordinary. God is calling our attention. God is calling us to him. He said, my people, look at me. We see in the time of Moses, uh, excuse me, in the time of uh, uh, Noah, we, we read that story way back and people are still getting it. These are examples. We see the flood. We read about the flood, we didn't see, but we, we read about the flood and people are still getting about the, the, the same thing. These are typically examples to tell us that when God turns his back, he's ready. He loves his children, but when we don't do according to, some things will happen, you will be exempted. You will even doubt yourself. This one happened. Why did I'm the only one who came out? Because you are doing, God is not far from us. He listened to the cry of the righteous. But the unrighteous, he will turn his back. And that's what's happening now in this our time. He's turning, no our time came. He turned his back to them when he asked Noah, go speak to these people. Too much violence is going on. I need these people in this ark. Build this ark. Let these people come in this ark. But what happened? Nobody listened. Everybody was busy doing their thing just like this our time. But when Noah was done with the ark, he took everybody that were ready in. And when they learned, they were saved. Because they listened. It's the same thing to the word of God. When we relent, in the things of God, you will see what will happen. When God will approve you for everything. In the things of God, it's not anything that they call magic. It takes time. But once God start blessing you, once God, God start doing things in your life, then you will know that that thing I did years back that I was doing is manifesting. And when God start manifesting things in your life, I tell you, you will think that you're the only one. No. Nobody can overpray. But you can under pray because when you don't pray, you are under pray. But when you pray, you are over. It's good. So life without without God is meaningless. Nothing you can do. You, you won't tell me you sleep night. You wake up. You just go start car and start going without no praying, no talking, no conversation with God. So we see the time of, of Noah. How those people die. By the time they were coming, it's late. The time of Sodom and Gomorrah. These people, their life, the life they were living, we are living the same life this our time. You see how God, what God did. Everything that happened in their time is happening now, but we are not watching. We need to watch the signs. He said, during the last days, flood will come, earthquake, many things will start happening. Then you know my coming is coming closer. But people are not watching these signs. We're still enjoying the things of the world. God said when you are friend to the world, you are enemy to me. Enjoyment in the world is meaningless. So let's look what um, King Solomon said. Because we can make our example on him. He has so much. He was the wisest man in the entire world. He had so much. But what happened? Because of his foolishness. Land him to where he was. He ended up. He has, he has money. He has how many made. Everything was there. But he failed to, to listen to what God was saying. He had so many wives. And so many concubines. And what happened? His life ended up to be a foolish man. 
We don't want to be like that. These are some of the examples the Bible is showing us to see that you can see a good man started in a good soil, then he end up in a soil that is nothing, that cannot even produce fruit. We have some good soil that immediately start planting, it grow. You have some soil that is dead. That's how our life is. You can start as a good Christian, then you end up to the, to, uh, to, to the dead soil. Some people can start with nothing, but they end up where? But in the hands of God, he wants to see us righteous. We are all human. Mistakes are there. Things can happen, but we can make amends. So he said, without God, you will have no life at all. It is true. But some people think that without God, their life is there. No. When you have God, I have gone, I have been through so many accidents. God will take me. You will see the accident. People will come. The last one that I had, that accident, people came. I was standing there after I was discharged. Same day, next day, I went there. I look at the accident. I said, ah, God. I said, this is just you. People were asking, is this person still alive? I was standing among them. Is this person still alive? This can only be God if this person survived. It was not my magic. It was not my making. But God showed up. Because he knows how I stand for him. He said, when you do the business of God, he do your own business. When you work for God, he will work for you. It might not happen within that time, but sometime when he starts working for you, you will see. When we stand there, people are asking, who is the person? Oh my God. It was so, even myself, when I came to the scene, I was like, ah, God. Accident occurred. A stop sign was bent down inside the same car I was driving. A fence was bent down inside the same car. Some assault and stand. I remember I came out of that car and I entered now inside the car. I was gone. I don't even know where I was. I saw myself inside university hospital. I asked, what am I doing here? They said, you involved in an accident, but you are fine. Same day I was discharged, went home. Next day I came, people were asked, I said, it's me. So people ask, what do you have that other people don't have? Because I have God. If it was somebody, when the devil is ready to give, he give, he don't even look back. That was the hand of the devil. It was not because I drove very well. I reached to a stop sign. But the other person that was coming did not stop. Just came. But if you don't have God, that moment the devil, because the devil is ready anytime, whether the devil knew I was going to sit to be a preacher. He said, you, you will not preach to what I will kill you before time. God said, no. This is my daughter. I will fight for my daughter. God intervened. The devil did, but God came. And not that only accident. More came, the devil. But I am still alive. God showed up every time. Nothing will happen. Nothing. The last one that, that was supposed to happen, that one, I was the one driving. It was my time for my wedding. I was driving. I have the groomsman in there. I have the husband in there. I have all the bridesmaids in there. I was the one driving. I reached to intercession. God opened my eyes. I, I look through the realm of the spirit. I see in there. Everything while I was driving, I was seeing. Step in the gas. Right. Cars are coming everywhere. I was in the middle. The Holy Spirit just came and put my foot right in the brake. The, 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 the brake. And I stopped. Right there. All the cars were. I look. I told all of them. I said, what I saw. If it should have happened today, none of us will survive in this car. All of us should have been dead. But God showed up again there. Because I saw the accident. God opened my eyes. I saw the accident in the name of the Spirit. But God showed up. The Holy Spirit just pulled my leg and stepped. When I stepped, everybody that was in the car, everybody just came in front. Eat themselves, but we were fine. God showed up. The devil has tried so many things because the devil knew I would be talking. But if God, if I was not doing the things of God, I should have been dead. No one accident. And in during that time, a lot of people, the enemy tried them during the wedding time. This person will go accident immediately, but it never occurred because all of us that were there, we were under the protection. Of God. Even our spiritual mentors. Because all of them were there praying. My own spiritual mentor was praying for this wedding. Because the devil knows. 
He said, when this get married, when he start talking, the kingdom of the hell will, will, will scatter. Because the devil know who I am. Because you know why? I hold God, not today. Even when I was young to where I am. So I encourage everybody, God, we cannot live without the things of God. Our life should be based on the things of God. You cannot talk without mention. You cannot wake up in the morning and just go. You have to pray. Because when they start fighting you at your job, when you have God, God will just show up. Many times it has happened to me. God will just show up for nowhere. He fixed something right there. While I'm worried, this Holy Spirit says, why are you worried? You are a speaker of God. You speak for God. You are a speaker for God in the world. When something happens, just go. He will show up and fix everything. I will come now and say, wow. So life without God for me is meaningless. And that's what happened to King Solomon. Life without God in his life was meaningless. All what he did, he ended up in meaningless things. He said, without God, you will have no life at all. Outside, outside of Christ, there is no reality, which is true. There is no logic. There is no reason for anything. Everything was made for Christ. Your next breath comes from Christ and is to go back to Christ. He died for us. We must fully depend on Jesus. Without him, we have nothing, which is true. But with him, we have everything. When you do not have Christ, you have no power over sins. Satan, and you will truly have life with Christ. When without Christ, you have no power over sins because the devil already know. The devil already know that who you are. Let the devil stand and watch me and say, I'm coming to you. Immediately, the devil start talking, you know, already. He said, this one, I cannot stand because what is in that one, I cannot even stand. The things of the world don't confuse me anymore. When I was young, yes. But where I am now, the things of the devil will never confuse me. Never. So we have to hold fast to the things of God. This is all we have now. If we cannot hold fast to the things of God, then we are nothing. We have to hold fast. So the things of God is all I want everybody to understand that the things of God is priority. They said after the church, who is you and your family? So God first, they are second. But now when you see the world, everybody just focus on themselves and leave the things of God aside. They say, I, I will start going to church next year. You might don't have the time. When COVID came, how many people understand that COVID came? You know how many people are gone before their time? At that time, you are not able to give your life to Christ. At that time, you are not able to speak. You are not able to speak. A lot of people died. Without them giving their life to Christ. A lot of people die without repenting. Excuse my language. A gay guy was giving in the news, was talking. He said, my husband is, is, is in intensive care. I don't know what is going on with my husband. And all of a sudden, the last news he gave was his husband died during COVID. He was not able to repent at that time. He was not able to repent. Wherever he is now, he has gone. He's, he has gone with all those sins that he has committed. So these are some of the examples we need to look at. That life is not ours. It is God. It's not our own that we can just have in our hands, playing with it. Playing with it. Tomorrow I will extend my life. No. We only think about today. It's only today is ours. Tomorrow might not be ours. Tomorrow might be somebody else's day. Your day is done. Your time is done on this art. You are ready to go. God say, you know what? I place you on this art for something. You have played your part. Your time is up. Come up. There's nothing we can do. When people say, I'm scared of death. No, do what? Do your part on this art. Do what you hear. Our life, what we do, had values to our life. What you do make you meaningless. We have to hold fast to the things of God. So let me go into some verses. Let's see what we can get out of this. Thank you, Andrew, for joining today. God bless. I see many people here today. God bless. Um, is that Joseph? Edwin, thank you for joining. God bless you. Andrew Koma, thank you, my dear. God bless you. Jo Josephus. 
Thank you, Papi. Thank you. God bless you for joining. And everybody else that is in this room, God bless you. I know your joining today will not go in vain. We are going to learn a lot. And I'd like to encourage anyone, wherever you are, if you want to join the forum, let me know ahead of time, like Saturday. We can come, I can open a, a forum where all of us can able to talk the things of God. He said, the Lord is our strength. He directs our lives and he, he is our deliverer. You need the Lord. We need the Lord in our life. We need to stop trying to live without him. We need God in our life. We need to stop living without him. He said, repent and put your trust in Christ. Salvation is of the Lord. If you are not safe, please, we need to start looking into that. If you are not safe, you don't know Christ, you need to start looking into that. You need to start trying to become according to the Bible. All of us grow up, we live a life that was not worthy. But when you know now the word of God, you start living. The Bible is not something that we just take today and you start eating like a food. It's something that is gradually. But when you start reading the word of God and when you are so much into the word, things will start happening in your life. The life that you used to live, nobody will change you. The Holy Spirit inside you will be able to change you. It will transform you with the word. That's why we encourage believers to constantly read in your word because that's all we rely on. When you read the word of God, it's able to correct a lot of mistakes years back to now. When you read the word of God, it's able to teach you. You read the word of God, it's able to train you. You read the word of God, it's able to transform you and change you from the life you used to live to the life that you are living now. So I encourage everyone. He said, what does the Bible say about, says about living without God? When you look at John 15, 4, remind me, as I always remind you, no branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain, you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from God, we cannot do anything. This is our little life that we are living. Let the world don't confuse us. The things of the world is sweet. But at the same time, it's so much there. He said, the peace in the world, that's not what I'm giving you. I'm giving you the peace. Peace in the world is not peace. How many peace in the world? But God own peace is the peace that I'm talking about. So when we look at the same John 5, 19, what it says. Let's look at John 5, 19. Let, I will look at it in different contexts. John 5, 19. John 5, 19 says, It said, Jesus gave them his answer. Verily, truly, I tell you, the son can do nothing by himself. He can only do, can do only what he sees his father doing. Because whatever the father does, the son does. For the father loves the son and shows him all he does. So what we are looking at, we cannot do anything. Jesus cannot do anything at that time by himself. So I tell you the truth, the son can do nothing by himself. He does only what he sees the father doing. Whatever the father does, the son also does. So when I was taking you guys just now to Exiliasis, Exiliasis was telling us life is meaningless. He said everything is meaningless, said the, the wisest man, King Solomon, in the book of Exiliasis. Solomon expressed this to us that I have seen all things that are done under the sun. All of them are meaningless. We are chasing after the wing. We are chasing after the wing. That is Exiliasis 1. So let's look at that Exiliasis 1.14. We just read that. It said life is meaningless. What we do here is meaningless. So when you are doing, we go to his example. What he said. He said in 114, what it says, I have seen all the things that are done under the sun. All of them are meaningless, a chasing after the wind. Why are we running after life? Life is good, money is good, everything is good. But if without God, it's meaningless. He does his time without God. See the life that he lived during his time. 
Was God part of that? No. But because God was not part of it, you see what happened to his life? He ended up a foolish man. Nobody don't want to be like him. No, none of us. So it's good for us to, to search the word. It's good for you to sit down, search the Bible. It said life is meaningless. You cannot do anything. You open that life without God has no purpose or hope. Life without God has no purpose or hope. Man's word comes only from the Lord. He said, people, apart from God, you are unsuccessful. He said, search for fulfillment and enjoyment to climb their restlessness. We, without God, there is nothing. A lot of people, they have their success. He will tell you it's hard work. Yes, hard work pay off. But some people, hard work had pay them off, but they are not able to do what hard work pay them off for. Maybe they make a lot of money. Maybe they have house. Many things, but they are, when God is not part of it, one day, what something will happen. We live in a place where some people will tell you, I've lived in this house. I have worked so hard. This house, I've lived there 30 years. Everything is there. They make a lot of money. Maybe open a, a store, start doing a lot of business. God give them all that time. They did not repent. He waited because God is a God. Give you a chance to come back and repent. Somebody build a house. Everything is there. Money. They have struggled all these years, more than 20 years to build a whole house. Money, everything is there. But they don't know God. Just one day, after all these years, nothing happened. The devil didn't do anything within that time. He did not even say, oh, I've given you guys a lot. You have lived this life. Just one day after 20 years, I've got the money. I've built the house. I've opened the biggest store, the mall. Everything is there. This is my own time to enjoy what happened. Flood came. Water. House. Everything swept. Where did it go? In the pit. But when you know God, he has his way of doing things. He will go back there and fix. If even he wants to send his rat upon the entire wall, he will look at your own house and protect that. People will be asking questions. All the houses flood. But this one, nothing. Then people will ask, this is only God can do this. That's why we cannot live without God. We need to put God part of. When you marry the wife or husband, you are home. If God is not part of that home, it's nothing. It will be quarrelsome, argumentative. Many things will happen, but when you place God, He is, he is the one that will do His things. When, when, when my anniversary came, I called my spiritual mentor to pray for us. What did he tell me? He told me, say, my daughter, all these years that you are going one by one at a time, it's not you. I said, who? He say your father in heaven. He say all the years. He say in marriage we Christian. When we married, we, we are in a relationship with our wife. Or when you marry a woman, you leave everything to God. In that home, he said for one year, everything that you go through, it's not you. It's God working his power in that marriage. Because it's two people are coming from different, different background. You from this, you from this. And meet together and married and don't understand each other but you go for one year you go for two years you go for three years four years without the man slapping you without the man cursing you without the man doing nothing but he says smooth it's not you it's god because you invite god in that family so when god is there he is doing his thing he said my daughter enjoy your home god will do more so i encourage everyone because you cannot go to bed without praying you have to own and tell the devil that this one, you cannot scatter this one. This one is from above. It's going to remain until eternity. Own your partner and pray. Pray for your partner. Let your partner pray for you. Prophesy in his life. Let him prophesy in your own life. Prophesy in the life of the children. Oh God, when you do that, the devil will see your home. He will tell you plain, I will not come. This home is protected. Because when you keep doing that, the coverage of God is on your home. The devil will see, but light in that home. So he's not able to penetrate. And none of you guys, I cannot leave my God. Our house, I call it a house of prayer. Food, we pray. Every little thing, if we pray 5 a.m., we do our devotion. Going out again, we'll say our last prayer. Not that we are crazy. No, because we have seen what God has done through us. What God has done through us, we have seen it. 
So we want to make that part of our life forever. So King Solomon said, without God, your life without God has no purpose or hope. People that are living, just saying, me, I'm enjoying why it lasts. You have to put God in that enjoyment so that it will last better. So it will last better. He said, do, do, you, do, you know, do you long for a new heaven and earth where there is no sin? Satan and suffering. If not, why not? Do you love the world too much to want to live it? Yes, for me to live in Christ and to die and gain. Live in Christ and to die again. Paul expressed his desire to continue his fruitful labor, but also wanted to go to his internal home. Let's look at Philippians 1, 21. Philippians 1, 21. Let's look at what he says. People won't live the life and enjoy. Philippians 1, 21. Let's see what that tells us. He said, for me to live is, is Christ. And to die is gain. For you to live is Christ. And to die is gain. That's what, that's what Philippians Apostle Paul says. When you search your word, you know exactly what you are saying. And you look at 2 Corinthians 5 8. 2 Corinthians 5 8. The same Philippians is 1 21 to 24. Let's, let's look at the rest of it. Let's look at what 22 says. 22 says, if I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruit, fruitful labor for me. Yet, what shall I choose? And it's better by far. But it's, it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. It's better for you to remain in the body. We are going to look at 2 Corinthians as well, what it says. 2 Corinthians 5, 8. Let's look at what, what 2 Corinthians 5, 8 is telling us. 5, 8 says, We are confident, I say, and we prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So if we make it our goal to please him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each of us may receive what is due for us, the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. Everyone will come to, 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 to judgment table. Whatever we do under this act, whatever we say, for people to think that I will enjoy, I will do the things of the world, you will do. But just remember, there's judgment for all of us. We don't want the things of the world to fool every one of us. If you have done the things of the world so many years, there's no profit, then turn to the things of God. Because people, people are still preaching. People want to hear what they want to hear, but they don't want to hear the word of God. Jesus told us, he said, many will come in my name, but they are in wolf clothing. They will only preach what people hear, what they want to hear. We are not preaching about prosperity. It comes after. But if you're talking about prosperity, then you, you are not giving, feeding the people what they need to know. We need to know about the things of God. We need to know about repentance. Many, many, many men and women on this earth, many, even our children that are growing, we are not telling them the things of God. So they follow our footsteps or they follow the things of the world. You go Twitter, you go, for example, you go Instagram. A lot of young kids at the age die because of funny things. We don't train them the way of the Lord. When they go to this social media, what they see is what they see, what they get. We don't monitor them. We don't check them. We don't preach about the things of God. He says it's the things of the world. Let them enjoy too. But that things of the world is killing so many young ones. They need to know the side effect or the things of God. When you don't do the things of God, what will the effect of it? But we are not teaching them. We are not training them. Even when you come on here to preach the gospel of Christ, few people will come and listen. The rest, if, if, if a woman of God, of, uh, if I was sitting here now talking about something else, the type of people, how many people will be here? Maybe the entire world will be sitting listening. But once it's the things of God, nobody don't want to listen. You say, oh, this, you talk, this woman of God talk too much about the things of God. That's all we need to hear. 
We need that to nourish our body. We can enjoy our enjoyment, but don't leave the things of God. So we are looking at Exiliasis 4. We'll look at 2. 4, 2. 4, 2. Then we'll look at 1 Corinthians 2, 9. Exiliasis 4, 2. What it says. Exiliasis 4, 2. What it says. It says, And I declare that the dead... Who, are, uh, who had already died are happier than the living who are still alive. But he said to him, but better than both is the one who has never been born, who has not seen the evil that is done under the sun. He said, we that are already on earth, that's what he's saying. He declared that the dead who had already died are happier than the living. They are gone. God can create a particular person and and place you on this earth for this particular purpose. Some people will do. You see 40 years gone. People start crying. God don't want you to do more. than you start sinning. He will take you. He said they, they are happy because they are gone. We cry because people. When somebody dies we start crying. But he said they are happy. They are gone. But we that are living. We are still living in evil world. But those who are not born. They, will not, they, they are not born. Because why? He said it is better. It's one who has never been born. Who has never seen evil that is under the sun. Many evil things are happening. We cannot change the entire world. But we can change ourselves in some of those things. We can change ourselves. He look again is at uh, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5, 8. What that says. 2 Corinthians 5, 8. That's uh, Apostle Paul. 5, 8. What it says. He says, 5, 8 says, And they brought up the ark and the tent of meeting and all the sacred flourishing in it. The radical priest carried them up and the king Solomon and the entire assembly of Israel that had gathered about him were before the ark, sacrificing so many sheep and cattle that they could not record it or count it. So he said, The priest then brought the ark of the Lord covenant to its place in the inner sanctuary of the temple, the most holy place, and put it beneath the wings of the cubit. The cubit spread their wings over the place of the ark and covered the ark and its carrying poles. These people were so long that their ends extending from the ark could be seen from in front of the inner sanctuary, but not from outside the holy place. And they, all, and they are all still there today. There's nothing in the ark except the two tables that Moses had placed in it at Hebron, where the Lord made a covenant with the Israelites after they came to Egypt. So when you look at this, in the same first Corinthians, when you look at this, he said, do you consider heaven your own? Yes. A Christian awareness of living in this world, but not belonging to it. It is certainly make no sense. We want to make this our home, but we are not living in this home. We are living on this earth for now, but it's not where we belong. We are only on this earth, just a passing by. What God has placed us on this earth to do, he wants us to do it. But actually, this is not our dwelling place. We will live. Everyone should have that in their mind that one day you will die and go. Is heaven your home? Yes. If you are going to make eternity. If it's hell your home, yes, if that's where you will find yourself. But while we are living on this earth, we need to understand that this earth does not belong to us. God placed us here for a reason. Whatever your reason is, make, make, make sure you do what you are supposed to do so that it can add value to your lives. It's a current, our nation and all evils are being exposed. We look at what is going on in America now. You see how they are fighting for abortion. They are fighting for abortion worldwide. We see many politicians are calling for the persecution of Christians by labeling them a hate group and trying to pass the Iniquity Act, which is manslaughter. We see all these things that is going on. Being a Christian in the Middle East is dangerous and deadly. All these places. Christians are haunted. 
and massive in Africa. We see what happened in Nigeria. People are doing all night. What happened? They went in there and killed. So you see the world now. The devil owned the world to himself. That is only us need to come together and fight back. Now they have raised a, a prayer group for Sierra Leone. We thank God for your life, man of God, for going there, for even trying that when the Holy Spirit speaks to you. Because nobody don't care about that in, in, in that area. You see what is happening in, in Nigeria? What happened today? Apostle Suleiman, Joseph Suleiman, when they nearly killed all of them, according to what we had, only seven people died. So people don't want to hear nothing about the things of God again. The world now is in the hands of the devil. If you don't get up and fight as a, as, a, as a child of God or fight, they will be coming for every one of us because we are speaking. That's why you need to hold God with your, with your ten fingers so that the fire of God will be upon you. If that man was not preaching or praying the right way, he should have been dead today. We should have been talking about his life that is no more. But God kept him. Let's stand. Let's stand. The pulpit, all of us need to co come together. Let's stand. Those who, are, those who are coming as a wolf clothing, saying that they are, they are standing for Christ, the world will come for you. The world will come for you. We see now in the Middle East, we see in Africa, they are torturing and left to starve, die in prison. We see what happened in North Korea and China. But well, thanks to God, well, thanks to happy ever. So now, when we look in the world, in Philippians 2, 13, it said, For it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. The Bible verses that tells us about Christ without God, it says in John 15, 4 to 8, what it says, Abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit itself, unless it abide in the vein. Neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, I in him, I in him bear much fruit. We look at Exodus 2, 8, 10, what it says. For by grace you in heaven, been saved through faith, and, not, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. Not of work, least anyone should boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ. Jesus for good works, which God prepared for and that we should walk in them. When you look at the word of God, all these words, when you walk in the things of God, you walk in them, you see what God can do. Second Corinthians 5, 17 to 18. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. It's a beyond. All things have become new. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. When we look at all this word, it's so many, many Bible verses about this. But what, what are you telling me about your life? Are you life without Christ? When you look at Luke 5, 14, 5, 4 to 14. He said, when he stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your net for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat, to come and help them. And they came and filled the boat. The boat. So they gave they, they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knee, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. So also we are James and John, the son of ZDB. Who were parted with Simon? And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now you will catch men. So why they why so when they, they had bought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. 
How many of us are thinking of this? Have you read Luke 5, 4 to 11? He said, from this time, start catching men, not fish. How many of us are taking people, talking to people about the things of God? Take your friend to church. Explain just a lot of people are dying, dying on this land, don't know about Christ. A lot of people are living that don't know anything. They have not repented. They are still living. When you know this God, catch men, take them to church. You cannot force them to church. Jesus said, from this time, you start catching men. How many of us are talking to our wives, our husband, to do the things of God? I know a lot of things have come out about men of God. Those who are harassing people for their money. Those who are saying they're making money double. Those who are doing all these things. We are talking of real men of God, women of God. It's the word. I encourage everyone, the word. You need the word. Sit and listen. Look for a Bible-believing church. Go for the word. You need the word. When you start hearing the word, changes start occurring. When you start hearing the word, things start manifesting in your life. When you start hearing the word, you see correction start happening. When you start hearing the word, you see your, your uh, um, training start happening in your life. When you start hearing the word, you start teaching the word to your family. But when you are novice to the word of God, you are not. you, you will not know what is happening in, in your own life. The Holy Spirit is available in all of us. It can only be active when you activate it with the word of God. But when you don't activate the, the spirit in you, you will not know. You will be walking into your debt. You don't know. The Holy Spirit will speak to you. You will even be listening to that voice coming to you. But because your spirit is dead, you will not be able to even know what the spirit is saying. You will lay down, have a dream. You remember the dream, immediately wake up. You forget the dream. But the Spirit was speaking to you. God come through us. Either through by dreams, through by vision. Or he revealed something through revelation. But you will not be able to conquer those things. Because why? You are dead. Spiritually. Spiritually you are dead. So you cannot be able to understand what he's, he's saying. He's saving you. Say don't today when you wake up don't go out. Oh I have a dream but I didn't remember. But the Holy Spirit when you. After those times. Holy Spirit remind me, you will start getting them little by little, it's coming. At times it happened to me, I will lay down and don't remember when I get up, I saw the Spirit. What happened today? Then I start getting them little by little, I'll go back to sleep and ask, then I'll get everything. At times he's showing you, don't go anywhere today or this is about to happen. But a lot of us are spiritually dead because we don't read the word. You can be only active when you read the word. He said the word is sharp and up to edge it. You can be only active in the things of God when the word is, is in you. It's saying Hebrews 1, 1 to 3. It's said God who at various times and various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophet has in this last day spoken to us by his son whom he has appointed heir of all things through whom also he made the worlds who being the brightness of his glory and expressed it he express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged out sins, sat down at the right hand of the magistrate on earth. He said, God was time and spoke in the past to the fathers and to the prophet has in last days spoken to his son. So when you look at the same Hebrews 13.5, he said, let your conduct be without covetousness, be content with, with short things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Father said he will never leave us, neither forsake us. So if we, if we sit, we know all these things. What are you waiting for? Why the things of the world will confuse your entire life? Now you see the devil will go in some home, a stranger. We just come in a home and scatter a whole marriage that God has blessed. It's a blessing from God. But because of the things of the world, many homes are, are, are not uh, uh, capable uh, 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 together. I don't even know the words that I want to put, but many homes are breaking because we are not together. When you are together in the word of, in the word of God, in your home is together. 
But when you are not together in the, in the, in the, in the things of God, your home is scattered. We need to do everything with God. Without God, life is meaningless. You, if you sit down, you read the book of Ex Exiliasis. I'm going to go with and look for some passages in Exiliasis so that we can go through them. Let's look, let look uh, um, in Exiliasis. Let's see what we can read. So he said, life without Christ will go there and say it's dangerous. Then you check your soul, you will, see, you will see it is true. We all know this deep down that there is something more for us beyond ourselves and this world. So we are going to look some of the things. He said, you need to be perfect to meet God's standard. And you can even get close by your own effort. Now we look Isaiah 64, 6. We all have become like one who is unclean. And all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We are fed like a leaf and our iniquities like the wind take us away. So we need to be perfect. We need to be righteous to meet the standard of God. And Mark, Mark 8, 30, 36, 37 says, You he said, for what will, what will profit a man if he gain the entire world? And loses his own soul. Or what will a man give in exchange for the soul? You wasted your whole life. Pursuing, running after stuff and people. That never brings you real joy and peace. A lot of people are wasting their time. Running after many things in this world. That cannot bring them joy. That cannot bring them happiness. That can do nothing to them. And end up losing their soul. You know how many people that have died. Drinking alcohol. You get paid today. They pay you today. You sit in a bar. Drink to excess. You start your car. Kill so many innocent souls. And you die at the same time. A lot. A lot of die. When we, when we are praying. We pray when we go out there. That we will not die by all these drivers. That you take drugs. You take alcohol. The world now is just upside down. We don't even know what to do. You watch news, violences, gunshot everywhere. Everywhere, the entire world is not even USA or other places. Gunshot everywhere. You leave your home, you don't even know whether you are coming back. You leave to go to the store, you never came back. Many things. Because people are giving their life to this world. For nothing, you will go kill somebody for somebody. You all gone for what? At the end of the day, say somebody is mentally sick. All these things. Let all God. Let's see what God will do for us in that time of trouble. You cannot. You cannot gain the whole world and then you lose your life. Many people have lost their life for something that is not even their business. Many people. When we look at Romans 12, 1 to 2, what it says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is, the true, this is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. It's good, pleasure. It's good pleasing, and perfect will. Romans 12, 1, 2. You are trying to find purpose in life. Without ever connection with the Holy One, you can never give your real purpose. It's like playing, playing game without, without king of God. Like when you're playing game, our body is the body and the temple of God. But now, do you know how many people, when even they said this is your own body, you should respect. People don't respect. People, a lot of people said, okay, you can do prostitution to make money. Let's forget about them. Any woman, whether you are standing in the street or you are not standing in the street, for even dating a man that is not your husband, sleeping with that man, you have done what you're not supposed to do. So you cannot even condemn them that stand in the street. We cannot condemn them. But what about you that know of these things in the Bible, but you are still doing it anyway? Maybe those who we are condemning don't know. The gospel needs to reach to them. We need to preach them. When you see them in the street, you call one. 
I can help you. I can change your entire life. So you cannot live this life again. Because it will give you purpose. I can come in the street. I go to school. I, I've got all the, the, the degree in the world. But there is no job. So the only way I can make money is to sell my body. Maybe you don't know the gospel. You go with the gospel to her. And then see. You can try without fail. At times some people try one time. The Holy Spirit will just go through them. And be able to get them out of the street. But at the same time. The body is the temple of God. It's the temple of God. Even men, a, woman, a wife that is a woman that is not your wife, or if you are not married, you cannot do those intimacy. Because once you have done it, you have given your body to sin. Satan has got a hold of you. When you want to talk, he said, stop talking. You were sleeping yesterday with a woman that is not yours. Or you were sleeping with somebody's wife. What do you want to say? Now the devil can talk anything he want to talk to you. He can say anything to you that you cannot even open your mouth to speak because you are living a life that is not of God. You cannot live those lives that is not of God. When you want to live, you live a life that is of God. So the devil is able to confuse you. The devil is able to tell you things that even you yourself, you'll be sitting there and say, what do you want to tell me? What do you want to say? Didn't I see you? Didn't I see you? Sleeping with somebody's wife. So when they say the body is the temple, we want to very be careful with our body. We want to very because the Bible is 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 so corny. If you don't take your time, you'll be living a, a, a sinful life all your life. So it's good for us to be searching, go deeper. Some things that you confuse, go. When your pastor preach, take notes so you will understand. This is our body. We can't condemn other people. Let's look first into our own life. Don't minimize it. When, once you start minimizing sin, you will continue to dwell in sin. Saying, well, they stand in the street. Me, I don't stand in the street. I have, we talk about, some of them talk about sugar daddy. This is your destiny you are giving. The young ones, 21, 22, you cannot go to school. You cannot listen to your parents. You cannot do what is right. You're looking for somebody that married as a wife in that home. That's somebody's husband that you won't take. That's somebody's husband you want to take. You take that somebody else by you say, this is my sugar daddy. You start taking that money, eating that money. That wife is in that home. He said the prayer of the righteous is very powerful. You don't, you don't play with people that open their mouth to pray. Because when they pray, they will pray all corner. All my enemies, those who gather for me, those prayers, they are powerful. When you are done praying, you young girl, 22, when you're supposed to be doing the things of God. You are not doing or listen to your mother or your parent. You want a, 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 a daddy that can daddy you or even grandfather you, granddaughter you. You leave that one. You go to, you dated somebody else's husband and you make money out of that husband, buy you a car, get you a house, you live in that house. The judgment day, you will speak. You pray for your life not to die that day. But when you die that day, you will go straight to hell because that's somebody else's husband. You cannot date somebody else's husband and take money from them. And you have a house. That wife that is in that house when that wife is praying. Your own, you young girl, when you grow up, you start living your life. When you marry to that husband, they use the word, it comes back. What you did is coming back to you. Nothing will do on this earth that we cannot face judgment. All of us will face judgment. When you do good, you will meet the evil. When you do wrong, you will go to hell. We look at the story of Lazarus and the beggar. What happened? You get money, you cannot help the beggar. You get money, you cannot give to people that need at that time. What happened? When both of them die, the one go to heaven, the one was in hellfire. We have to very be careful in the things that we live on this earth. If we don't be careful. The world, we see how the world is now. Violence is everywhere. People are killing each other. People don't even care. The, the, the devil has ruled the world. He's ruling the world now. We that are praying, we are just 20%. The, 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 the things of the world is 80%. People focus on the things of the world. Many are dying. We don't know the reason. We have to stand in the things of God. That's what they said. This is our body. We need to treat our body. Because he said the body is the temple of God. If you are not married, don't go give yourself to man. Once you have slept with a man, you have defined yourself. You wait for that right time. A lot of mistakes occur before when people don't know the things of God. But now when we know the things of God, 
we need to keep this body for only your husband. When a woman has dressed now, you leave your breast, you leave everything out. What are you keeping? You are not keeping because if you are keeping that body, it's only for you and your husband. We're not criticizing them, but we need to say these words so that all of us will be able to grow and know how to cover ourselves. A lot of mistakes occur, but when you know now the things of God, you know the Bible, you know when they preach these things, you should cover yourself. So women will cover because the body, your body, when you cover it, is only you and your husband. When you go inside the room, let your husband see how you are. But when you leave it open now for all men, so who are you? So what's the difference of the women that are standing in the street? They're waiting for man to pay them with money for intimacy. What is the difference with you that will leave your entire skin in the street? There's no difference. So we cannot condemn them. You work on yourself before you start condemning. We need to, to, we need to cover ourselves. We, our body is the temple of God. We need to take care of it. I, I watched one lady that said, I kept men for money. Men give me so much money. I built a house. I have a car. I, I did surgery. They, they did surgery. I have a lot of butts. They put surgery. I have a breast. They add everything. What God created, how God created her. She don't want that one. She had everything. What happened? The house that she built, she lay down in that house. She was crying. She cannot sleep. It's like they were haunting her. Because she slept with almost all people's husband. And those money, she built a house, she has a car. But what happened? She was unable to sleep in that house because it's like somebody was chasing her. She cannot sleep. She was running, running, running. I saw that uh, um, on YouTube. She was running. She has the restless night. He said, what can you gain in the world? To give your soul to the world? And then now you come to enjoy it. You cannot. You give yourself a different chick. You make this go up. What God, God is not, see, God is not a foolish man to look at you and created you the way he wants. God created us the way he wants us, how to look. When we come on this earth, everybody's coming. If people don't give ejection for their lips to get fat, they will do everything. The things of the world is so much that if we don't know God, everybody will be following. So a lot of them, what happened to her? She gave up the house, she gave up the car, everything and ran to a church for prayer. The pastor told her, he said, sell everything, give everything to the poor. And that's what she did. Sold everything, give the money to the poor. She started going to church. Now, a life that she's living, all those things that she fixed. Because when you go to fix those things, you have to be fixing them. Not one time. Even when you go to whiten your teeth, you will whiten those teeth not one time. You have to go every time to white them. Every time to white them. Anything that you do to the body that is not of God, you have to be going for them to fix it. The day they fail, you will die. So all that thing that she fixed, everything is gone. She leave her body now normal. Even the cream she used to, to use on her skin to make her brighter, she stopped. She give her life. She said, the peace that I have now with God, the peace of the world was too much. It was too much. I want to follow the celebrity. I want to make my life like this. Every day I have to go to doctor to add more. I have, they have to take from my stomach to add. He said, the things that will go through, you people don't know. If I sit down and tell you guys, it's not even happiness. To make your stomach so flat, they will tell you, don't eat this. I went through a lot. He said, but what the life I'm living now, I thank God. So this, our body is the temple of God. God is, is a God that has so long patience. Watching us in the world, we see things that is happening. We even call into God, he's not listening to us. You know why? It's because our ways are dirty. We are living a righteous life on this earth. So God is ready to watch us and deal with us. So that's what's happening. We need to owe God. No matter what religion you are, let owe God with one. Life without God is meaningless. It's meaningless. So there's nothing better than people that are standing in the street. You tell, you call them names and these are possible. No. What about you? Maybe they don't know God. You have to take the word of God to them and preach it. But you that know God and backslide and don't do what is right. And they say judgment awaits all of us. Under the sun, everyone will pay for what they have done on this earth. The good one, the bad one, his, we are going to pay for it. So I encourage everyone, live righteously. Because on, in this earth, there's not much. M not much. I watch many of the celebrities, I say, God, save them. Because they don't know the things of the, 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 the things of God. They know the things of the world. One will go and make this stomach and take everything out. You see one so small. You start worrying what is happening with this. 
The other one did surgery, did surgery. What happened to her? Last day, doctor said you have done this so long, it's enough. This one you cannot add. If you decide to add, I don't know. They signed paper. Went in the theater. Took more than one hour. The lady that took her, I said, ah, you never been long like this. What is going on? When the doctor said, we'll try our best, she died. So you see, the things of the world, you think is easy. That's why we need to focus in the things of God. Some preaching, some teaching that you will, you will hear, a man of God or a woman of God is preaching. That can change some people's life. It's good sometimes we sit down and listen to the things of God. We look at Matthew 23, 27 to 28. What is it? It says, Wow to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites, you are like whitewashed too, which, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of bones and of dead and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside, you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside, you are full of hypocrites and wickedness. He said, being righteous in order to clean up is about beneficial as putting perfume and nice clothes on a corpse and calling it full of life. A lot of us, we call the name of the Lord in front of everybody, but in the corner, we are doing so much. Now you hear a lot of people, a lot of men of God names in, in, in mug mouth. You go YouTube, you go all this, you hear their mouth. We are not to judge. I'm a woman of God. When I see these things, I don't judge. But at the same time, what I'm saying, you hear it. We call ourselves Christian. Or you stand, you call the name of God. But when you are, go in the corner, you are sleeping with young children. You are doing many things for your name to be heard. You see now, Jesus told us, he said, a lot of prophets will come in my name. But they are wolf clothing. People are buying uh, uh, power for them to be known. People want to be a YouTuber. They want celebrity pastors, celebrity prophets. A lot of them are out there. Somebody will be sleeping today. Tomorrow you wake up and say, I'm, I'm a prophet. Prophesying, lying to people, taking their money from them. All of you will be judged. God is ready to judge all. These are the people this verse is saying. Saying that I'm righteous. But when you go in the corner, they are not. They will come and sit because now we have YouTube, we have all these things, Facebook, people are listening. You come and, and black the people with, with lies. Then when you check in the back, all lies. God is ready to judge all of us. So we have to do things with God, not without God. The money is good, but we cannot use God's name to take money from people. And we call ourselves, you cannot use the name of God in vain. He's going to ask everyone, I ask you to do my work. I did not ask you to go and do my work and take from people and lie to them, telling them I will double your money. Which church can you sit and somebody is telling you I'm a money doubler? Are we taking our magic into church? That's not what we are doing. Jesus did not do magic. He, 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 he healed people. He did many things that God asked him to do. He did it in his own time. Our own time now, people are doing magic. How you will tell me I'm doubling money? Double money, double in church. And you call that a church. All our encouraged people, stop running after all these things in this church. Prophecy. I'm a Christian, I'm a pastor. But I'm just saying, open your eyes and shine it this time. Go into a ministry that you can hear the word. The Bible is what is important. The Muslim will tell you the Quran is what is important. You need to listen to the preaching of the word. Not what the man is saying about himself, but the word. That's why we need to search the Bible, not the word. So that when you're sitting in front of a man of God or a woman of God preaching to you, you know exactly what they are saying. The word that they are saying is coming from the Bible. Don't sit unless somebody can tell you and at this. Now, when Jesus came his own time, what we understand? He, he preached, he healed, he did so many things in his own time. He has gone. This is our time. Now everybody wants to live a lavish life to stand in front of the camera. This is celebrity pastor. This is celebrity. All this is vanity upon vanity. Exiliasis say all the things in the world is vanity. You will die and leave all those things and go. Now you're standing in front of God. It's judgment time. Your time, what did you do? I was duping people money as a pastor. What time, what did you do? I steal a lot of money from people. Telling them I'll double their money. There are ways. There are ways. God is ready to deal with all of them. If they don't change their ways. So life without God is meaningless. A lot of them are living this life. They call themselves a man of God, but they are not a man of God. They're living this life. They call themselves a woman of God. It's money making. Praise the Lord. Number five, 
What he say? He say First Peter five eight. What he say? He say be sober minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, pawn around like a round lion, seeking someone to devour. That is First Peter five eight. Your enemy is stronger than you if you don't know that, and you can beat. He can beat you down any every time without without divine intervention. The devil is our enemy. If you don't know that, when you don't know God, you don't know about the word of God, you don't know how to read the Bible, you don't know. He's able to beat you down, blue, black, you cannot even fight him. Because you don't know the Bible. So the enemy, the, 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 our enemy is Satan. Satan can just take you, say, sit here, drink alcohol all your life. When you make money, you start drinking, drunk, and fall. The enemy will take you, blue, black, he said, you know what, I just want to put you in the world, sleep with any woman you see. Have intimacy with all of them. Blue, black. Nothing will come out of it. You are indulging in sin, going into sin, creeping into sin, until the sin comes into your own house now. You don't know what to do. Know God before it's late. We are saying all these things. You might not be able to listen to this again, but we need to know God. God is our source. Without God, life is meaningless. When people take their time to pray, people take their time to do this, you think it's for what? Because we want to be under the protection of God. A lot of people are not. They are not under the protection of God. We need to be under it. So the enemy, which who is Satan, is, is ready every day. When he see you like you empty, it's easy to come in. When you see some home, they are fighting, going back and forth, because God is not in that home. So when the devil looks, he said, this home is where I'm going to sit. I will sit in this home for the next six years, just scatter them, fighting husband and wife, put their head together, and take the children, put their head together. He will be there for six years without them gaining nothing. You see their own life like this. But when you have God in your life, in your home, the devil will look at your home, he will try to come, he will go back. Marriage is something that we all learn for. You will not tell me there is no argument. We can argue, and we learn. We can go, we have differences, we still learn. But as long as you have God, the Holy Spirit will teach you how to understand each other. Something that maybe is a common thing in a home, they will take it for days. The same Bible tell us we cannot sleep. The sun come down on us with malice. You, you have your wife home. You say, I will not talk to him tomorrow. And once it's a day one, day two, it will take a whole month. You guys are not talking. And once you guys are not talking to each other, you have give way to the, to the strange man, which is the devil, Satan, to come in your home. One month, two months, you guys are not talking. Somebody will be going in the street to do something. The other one is going the other end. The home is breaking. We need to search the world. We need to protect our family with the things of God. Prayer is very important in our life. You cannot live without praying. But when you have God in your home, something will happen. Click. God will speak to you. Don't you know it's your wife? Or don't you know it's your husband? You will make peace you don't even know. Because God will just come between you and make peace. Somebody will ask question. Are you okay? Or do you want something to drink? I do that with my, my own too. I will mess with him. Then I will come back and I will be the one fixing. Even when I see that face tight, I will still come and say, are you okay? Then we are friends. Then we kneel down to pray again. Then the next morning we are friends. But if something like that happens, we say, well, I will be the bigger man. I will not even talk to him. Who is him? Or who is she? Then Mali started. Sun gone down. The next day. The next day, take one month, two months. Then everybody starts separating. This one go to another room. It's separation. So the devil get all of us. He know how to get us. He know the people that don't know God. But when you have God in your family, whether food is there, whether money is not there, how God is, is, is making that family to connect every day, we cannot tell it. Our mouth cannot say. You will only say it's God. Because food will not be there, but God will make a way where there seems to be no way and you will eat for that day, sleep. Because God said we should not worry about tomorrow, but today. Every day God will make provision. Not money can bring love. Not money can bring anything. If you have that money, you have money full in your hand, without God, you are nothing. Meaningless. We need to have God in all that we do. If you don't have God, you are meaningless. We need to have God. Everything we do, we need to have God. So what it says, we have looked at First Peter and we look at Matthew. So what it says now, in Isaiah 43, 6, 7, what it says, it says, bring my son from afar and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. 
you were made to bring glory to God on this earth. He didn't put us on this earth to do anything we want to do. People start saying it's the devil. You have to come out of that devil. We have to. He said, you were made to bring glory to God. And you are trying to give it to someone or something else. And it's making you miserable inside. We, all of us that God created on this earth, we were made to bring glory to his name. Not a shame to give to the devil. You know how many people the devil is ruling? Because we don't want to listen to preaching. We don't want to listen. Just like the young guy that was a believer. He already gave his life to Christ. He's living for Christ. But he's still worried about the things that he used to do. Friends came to him. He gave his life. He's living like a born again. But they came to him. Can we go to the club? The Holy Spirit says, tell them no. You can't go to the club. Then they said, no. He said, no. They said, no. Just for one night, you will not go with us again. He followed them. They went. What they did, they poisoned what he was drinking. When you have changed your life from the things of the world to God, stay there. But when you want to complicate yourself, you won't be in church. Then you won't be do this. You won't. It's 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 too much. The devil knows when you give your life. He knows the benefit that you get from God when you are supporting the things of God or when you're doing things for God. He knows the benefit. So the devil is easy to come back and drag you. The boy followed them. What they did. They put poison in his drink. He drink that drink. When he came home, he was struggling. He died. Because he has to double-minded. We are on this earth for the glory of God. Anything you do, add value. If you don't know the things of God, you have no value. But you have to know the things of God to add value. When we take our time, we stand. You will see us from Monday to Sunday. Go to church. Preach the word of God. Do all these things. You think it's just... Something to drink water. The things of God is not easy. I tell you. But we are living for the glory of God on this earth. If you are living not for the glory of God. I don't know. I will encourage you. Seek the face of God. Seek the face of God. What it tells us in, in, in Corinthians 3.2. It says set your mind on things above. And not earthly things. You cannot place your mind on the things of the earth. It says set your mind on things above. Not only things you are placed or place your emphasis on leaving it for 70 years or more on this earth and give no emphasis or any preparation for the eternity you will have to live after this life. Everything that you are planning, not for this earth. People are building houses, you build 10 houses. Are you laying down in all those houses? No, we have orphanage, we have the poor. God said, Take care of the poor, take care of the widows. Take care of the, the orphanage, those who don't have. We have so many people that we help. But we are not helping them for the world to know. But secretly you take a particular person, or maybe two persons, say, you know what? This family, I will take care of them forever. That's what God wants. You look at a particular family, take, we have orphanage, we have so many. But somebody will build 10 houses, you cannot sleep in all. What are you doing with those 10 houses? You think that what you do on this earth, all these things, you get money in the bank, is so much, you cannot help. You get all these houses, you get so many cars, you get so many things. You cannot even help the orphanage, the widows, the poor, you cannot give to them. You have all these. You are not living your life for this world. You are living your life for when you are dead, when you are gone. When you are dead, when you are gone, that's your life. What you are going to meet, that's your treasure. You cannot place your treasure on this earth. Mug will eat. Flood will come, take the house. Flood, rain will come, take the, 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 the cars. Flood will come, take everything that you left without nothing. So we cannot do anything without God. When you have so much, you have to give. He said, give and never lack. When you give, you will get more. But when you get money to yourself, you're so greedy. Keep everything in the bank. I'm building my house for a future. Do you know whether you have future? You don't know. The future lies in the hands of God, not our hands. Even when we're talking about tomorrow, we don't know whether there's tomorrow. You will be talking today, you eat. Somebody tell you, yeah, I know this woman. I met her yesterday to the store. Today she's dead because tomorrow is never there. But whatever you have today, share. Let the poor eat. Let the widows eat. Let the orphanage eat. Whatever you sweat out of, give to others. That's what they call this treasure in heaven. 
Your on this earth is nothing. What you what you have here, you will die and leave it when flood come, or when they say last day born. We are just having everything on this earth for the time being. That's why this life that we are living, we are just transpass. Our life on this earth now is just temporary. Temporary. Permanent life is in heaven when you are gone. So we need to remember that. So we have to emphasize the life we live on this earth. So when you look at James 4, 4, what it says, it says, you yet do not know what tomorrow will bring. What's your life? What is your life? For you are a mist that appeared for a little time and then vanish. That's what James 4, 14 says. We are just here, just for a little while. Just a little while. They will vanish. You know how many people that have come do their part, God take them? It's their time. Death is there. We know life and death is all we have. When you are living, you do what is you're supposed to do to have value when you are gone. Let everybody know that, yes, this person lived this life, perform all what is performed, then God took you. But that's why this, this passage is telling us, yet... You do not know what tomorrow brings. We don't know about tomorrow. What is life? That's a question. He said, what you are in, you are in a mist that appeared just a little. We are in this mist just for this time. He said, and then vanish. We are in this world just for this time. People have taken the world now on their head, in their body, don't care about the things of God. You will see somebody who drink, drunk, no, cannot move, fornicate left and right, don't care, following young kids that can be their own great-granddaughter, sleeping with all type of women. It's a small time. You'll be doing that and die during that time. You did not repent. You did not uh, uh, ask for God and uh, 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 mercy. Within that time, God can give you a chance to change. When you don't want to change, the devil say, I've tried. Now, something, what will happen to you? You are gone. Everybody starts saying, ah, this man. Oh, this woman. Now, people are the one talking. We need to very be careful. That's what James is saying. So, let's look at what John 5, 15, 5 says. He said, I am divine. You are the branches. If you remain, remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you cannot do nothing. You are a blind, unaware, ignorant, and deceived. And you think you can figure out your own meaning on this earth, your own. You cannot, you cannot figure out nothing on your own. People can think, they will tell you, I got it. No, they don't. Go check where, they don't. We can only get it through by uh, linking into God. It's a link not on your own understanding, but the understanding of God. Many things we do. Wisdom come. When you know the things of God, you get so much wisdom. It's not about education. You will go and get all the book, the PhD and all the degree. But wisdom, it comes from above. When you know the things of God, when you know about God, when you practice these things, so much wisdom, you will even ask yourself. And Solomon was the wisest man. When God asked him, what do you want to say? Wisdom. God gave him wisdom. And after that wisdom, many other things came. But he didn't do what was supposed to be done. So he died like a foolish man. None of us want to be like that. So when we look at Romans, Romans 6, 23, it said, for the wages of sin is what? Death. The wages of sin is death. You will face a terrible judgment by the most powerful judge of all time. Who has overwhelmed proof against you and give the most punishment and you are willing to take chance that it will do it all go in your favor without any real reason to believe or to expect that you want it to be okay. So the wages of sin is death and you are going to face judgment. All of us, when you do right, you will see the benefit. But when you do wrong, you will see the judgment. He said, under this sun, when we die, God said, everyone will face judgment. Every one of us. So be careful of what you do, what you say. We have a lot of people that need help from us. In your own capacity, whatever way, you don't have to give up. But one meal a day to somebody means a lot. If you cannot give the entire world, but take a particular family, take care of them. 
you have fulfilled God promises. So when you look at um, um, Revelation 20, 14 to 15, it said the death and AIDS were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. It's just telling you when you die, what, what will happen. Anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. If your name is not found in the book of life, ready your name, you are in fire. You are in fire. They say you think you are pretty good and compare to the most of the world, then your wickedness just look different than yours. You think you will not die. All of us, judgment will come. If your name is not found in the book of life, you will be in fire every day. When we say some of these things, we're reading from the book. We say them. We are not saying them out of our own understanding or we are saying them because I want to say this is my life. No, I am reading from the Bible, then I interpret it through the Holy Spirit. If we don't take some of these things serious, you don't know when judgment your own start. Some people, their own judgment start already here. Already God has started dealing with them. But they still cannot see that light to, to repent. He said in Romans 23, 23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You think you are pretty and compared to the most of the world when your wickedness just look no difference. Many people have fall short. They have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. It's not late. I don't know who is listening. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. It's not late for you to, to amend and change your ways. It's not late. It's not late for you to start changing today. Tomorrow might be another day. We don't know. When you sleep, you wake up every day. You thank God for a new life, new day, new opportunity. Some people don't have that opportunity. Do you know how many people have money, but they are in bondage? They cannot even eat their money anymore. They cannot enjoy it. They are in bondage, in pain, in suffering. But you have life now full. You can move. You can eat. You can do so many things, but you are not making that life out of it. Those people that are laying in their bed saying, I wish I can turn the hands of time back and start all over. It's late. They are praying for death to come by force. They have so much money. They cannot use that money. They will give out. But they are praying now, say, God, kill me where I am. God say, no, I will not kill you. Your own judgment is starting here now. They say, your own is starting. Some people are prophesying death on their life. They are not dying. So a lot of people are paying now. When you look at John 10, 10, it said, truly, trust it's only found in Jesus. And only when we have, we have Jesus do we, we really know what, what is it to live. The theft comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundant. The devil comes to kill, steal and destroy. But what did Jesus came to do? To give life and abundance. But people will tell you, I won't enjoy life while it lasts. We all enjoy. You can be in the house of God, you enjoy. You can be anywhere you enjoy the things of God. But remember, enjoying life or doing your things without God is not you know. Life without Christ is crisis. Life without God is crisis. Everybody that is listening, just take it serious. Because the life without the things of God is crisis. When you don't know God, your home is, is not settled. Because who is going to settle that home is God. When you don't know, the devil will settle the home. He will take the husband out of the home, keep the husband in the street all day, all night. By the time you come, the wife is sleeping, the husband is up. Is up. Who, who is going to pray? It's supposed to be the wife and the husband pray together. But you are in the street, when you come now, the wife is asleep. Who is going to pray? You are not there to pray. We need to come together with our family to, to damn the devil. I tell the devil, damn you. Let all fast to the things of God. When you come home, you meet your wife, sweetheart, I'm home, let's pray. All the children, all of you guys, teach them the way of the Lord. Let them know about God. But if they don't know, 
Night come, they all sleep. Mother sleep, father is in the street. By the time you get home, it's late. Nobody is to pray. Sleep, wake up in the morning, everybody go do their thing. Same thing to the wife. We have to, when you have a home, you have to keep that home under the protection of God. You don't have a home and leave that home empty. You open that home to who? The devil. You say, this is my house. I'm going to open it. Let the devil come in this home and leave. He's going to live there. He will take all of you. The children will grow up, don't know what is God. We need to emphasize it for them to understand this is God. You tell them the effect, the side effect of the things of God. When you don't know God, this is this. When you know God, this is what will happen. In your life. Let them put the fear. It say a man that fear God will do anything. You want to marry to a man that fear God. If a man don't know about God or a woman don't know about God, no. I can tell you because you cannot know God today. You cannot meet a man today that don't know God. You marry that man, then you say the man should know God in the house. It's difficult. It's not your son to train out to know God right there. You should know God before you marry. If you don't know God, it's nothing. Because what are you married into? You are married into the devil itself. Because you guys will be quarreling arguments because God is not in that house. You want to marry, you want to search. Search very well if that man know God. Because when you know God, he, he will love that wife in that home. The wife will be love because God is love. When you know God, your wife, you should love your wife. When you know God, your husband, you should submit to your husband. But if you don't know God, you not, no, it's no submission when the husband talks, say, ah, it's just your own. What do you want to tell me? But when you know God, you marry that wife that know God. There's submission, respect. We're not saying submission, a woman should call. But when they say submission, respect. But if you don't know God, no respect. The home will even be in the hands of the devil. Even the children, when they talk, you say, ah, mommy, shut up, or daddy. Who born you? When I'm talking, you say, shut up. But no respect. When they seek respect to the father, they seek respect to the mother. Even the children, when they are growing, they will grow with respect. They will grow with respect. But you have all those children, when daddy talks, you say, ah, shut up. I see you doing this with mommy, or mommy doing this, or I see you doing this, or talking. No. Children should only know what is about children. And then you teach them the things of the, the way of God. That's what they need to know. Not things that they don't need to know. We cannot set them apart. Train them the, the way of the Lord and teach them to love one another. Love is the most important thing in life. When love is in the home, it grows. He grows when love is in the home. He grows. God is love. Love is about us. He said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. It's not only your family. People around you give them love. But now the world is hatred, jealousy, envy, backsliding, boasting, lies. It's in the thing. The devil has placed people to just sit to be lying. Anything you say, lie. Some people, they will say something, they say, no, I have to see with my eyes. That's what the devil has done. Because you don't know God. When you start reading your word, you know the word. Even to lie, you say, ah, I will not lie. Because the Holy Spirit will feed you. You say, I, did you just lie? You even fear to lie. When you know the word, you pray, you know God more. You will not lie. You will not steal. You will not boast. You will not backslide. You will not gossip. You will not jealous. Because you know God. Some of these things where you know you will not even do it. You say, ah. I'm not boasting. What are you boasting for? Because the life, is, your own life with mine is the same. Are you boasting because you wear the girl? Yeah, I wear clothes too. Are you boasting because, yes, I eat. So what are you boasting for? The blood that flow, that, that, that is flowing in you is the same blood I have. So there's nothing you boast. You boast of house. It's vanity. All these things are vanity. The things of the world is just vanity. You don't boast of houses. You don't boast of cars. You don't boast. What you boast of knowing God, when you know God, is, is something that's very good. But some people, we sit down, we boast, I have 10 cars. This is one of my house. Is that what we do? And we don't know God? It's a corny man. He watch you. He say, you don't know me and you are boasting. And you never boast of me. Because when you boast of all those things, it means you believe in those things. You worship your house. You worship what you have. But you don't worship God. You don't call the name of God. He say, all these things, when you love things more than God, then you are worshiping those things. 
Then God is watching you, calling man, the ageless father. He said, I'm watching you. One thing will happen, the devil say, everything go down the drain. Something that you suffer for 20 years, one day you just scatter. What are you going to do? Then now you see them running to church, running to mocks. Don't wait when you are old. Now that you are young, you are fresh, start calling the name of God. Exiliasis 1, what he tell us? He said, everything in life is meaningless. The word of the chicha, son of David, king of Jerusalem, what he says. It's a meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Exodus is one. It's an utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. What do people gain from all their labors at which they toil under the sun? Generation comes and generation go, but the earth remains forever. Are we understanding what I am saying? Are we understanding this? Generation come. You know how many people that have came and gone? We are here. Some of us will go. Others will come and they go. But this act is still the same. So why are we fighting? Why are we backbiting? Why are we jealous? Why are we stealing from all, each other? Why are we doing all these things? The world, it, the act remains the same way. All of us will come and go. You know how many people that have gone? My father came. He's gone. My mother, gone. I'm still here. Our own time will go. Others will come. But this act still remains. That's why we don't take the things of the world on our head. But the things of God. Because when you die, what you do on this earth is what you will meet. Eternity. The seed that you sow, if you sow a very good seed, is that seed that you will harvest. Take to heaven. But what you sow, if you sow the world, you are enjoying, you are doing everything when you die. What you sow on this earth is what you will meet in heaven. Hell, fire, judgment. It's waiting for all of us. He said, what do you do? You gain from the labors. What do you do? At which they toil under the sun. Generation come and generation go. But the earth remains forever. The sun rises and the sun sets. And all is back to where it rises. The wind blow to south and, and, and turns to north. Round and round it goes. And then what he said, ever, ever returning on its course, all stem flows into the sea, yet the sea is never full. He's explaining the story. To the place the stem comes from, there they return again. All things are worrisome, more than one can say. The things of the world is worrisome more than one could say. When you have the peace of God in your life, you don't even worry about the things of the world. I eat, I drink, I get up, pray. I say, God, what you have blessed me with, I thank you. You have money full your hand. Money everywhere, you don't know God. You have nothing. There is no peace. Go to those ones that have so much that they cannot even give nobody. Go to them and see. Their, wife, their life is worthless. They are not even happy. So whatever you have, thank God. If you have peace within yourself, you know God. Continue with that peace. And whatever you can you can do, do to people that you can help. Appreciate what God is doing in your life. Because life, he already said, is meaningless. He said, all things are worrisome. More than one can say. The eyes never enough of seeing, nor the ears is filled of hearing. What, what has been will be again. What has happened will happen again. That's what he's saying. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. Nothing new under the sun. There is nothing new under the sun. He says, is there anything of which one can say, look, this is something new? No. It's a question. It was there already long ago. What we are seeing has been there long ago. So nothing changed on this earth. What needs to change is you. You are the one that needs to change your characters, your ways, the way you do things, the way you talk. A child of God needs to be moderate. Know how to treat others. You cannot be better than no one. When you see somebody, I better than this. Ah, I don't talk to this low class. There is no low class in heaven. There is no low class on this earth. We are all the same in the presence of God. When we look at this man, you look at this one. You say I'm better than this. 
When you die, you go to heaven. The one that you think is better than it will be in heaven, you in hell. Because you think your money and all that you have, you are better. We are not better than none of ourselves. We are all the same. We treat everybody one. Love everybody one. It's so difficult for people to give love now. It's get over nothing. Difficult for people to give love. We need to give that love where the love deserve. It was already there. It was there before our time. That's what he's saying. Is there anything new? Is it was already long, already long ago? It was there before our time. He said, "No one remember the former generation. None of us will remember that. Even those yet to come will not remember by those who we follow. No one will remember the generation and will not remember." He said, "Wisdom is meaningless. The teacher was keen." Over Israel in, in, in Jerusalem. That's King Solomon. I applied my mind to study and explore my wisdom. All that is done under the heaven. What a heavy burden God has laid on mankind. I have seen all the things that are done under the sun. All of them are meaningless. You are chasing after the wings of the world. You are chasing the world. You are chasing wings. Why are we chasing the world? We leave God. Some people, when they say today is Sunday, go to church. That's the time they look in the one. He said today, the devil know how to, he's a corny man, he know how to deal with us. When you are living in sin, it's easy for the devil to drag you in sin. The devil know today is a day that you can go and get all the blessings. The devil say, ah, today is the day you make money. Open shop. You go open shop. You selling, making a lot of money. Ah, today is the best day. The devil is a corny. He will come with people that will buy. He will confuse the heart of people. Then somebody will say, you're not going to church. Say, no, Sunday is the day that money comes. He open shop. Sell. Money. You, you refuse to go pray. Make all that money. God give you a chance to be making that money. Say, I give you time to pray. You're not praying. One day for you to come to me, say no. He will give you a chance to make the money. The devil will give you a chance. You make all that money. One day that you want to enjoy, you see, it vanish. We need to face God. Make time for God. I saw, uh, for me, I sit down and ask myself a question. People that don't know God, that don't pray fast, they don't do all this. How do they live? You go a week without fasting a day. You have to choose a day inside the week. Maybe two days. I'm fasting this for myself. I'm fasting for my children. You yeah, ask some people, I don't like to fast. I don't know what is fast. But when you see people, God has said to them, they are living their life, he said, I jealous. God will just come there and do something to you because you cannot jealous of the anointing. When God has placed you where you're supposed to be, he said, just enjoy yourself now, not riches, but just I just want you to just enjoy. Then somebody said, look at this. You, be, you better be careful. So exiliasis continue. He said, I applied in 13, I applied my mind to study and exploit by wisdom all that is under the sun, under the heaven. What a heavy burden God has laid on mankind. I have seen all things that are, that are done under the sun. All of them are meaningless, a chasing after wind. What is crooked cannot be straightened. What is leaking cannot be counted. Lacking cannot be counted. I saw, I said to myself, look. I have increased in wisdom more than anyone who has ruled over Jerusalem before me. I have experienced much of wisdom and knowledge. Then I apply myself to the understanding of wisdom and also of, ma and also of madness and fully. But I learned that this too is chasing after wind. God bless him with everything. But the reason why he is telling us his story because he did not listen to the things of God. He did not He did not. Put himself in the things of God. So when he has that wisdom, he did not listen to what God was telling him. Do not marry from this place. Do not, because he said when you marry from this particular place, you will not know me. He left God's word and married from that place. Immediately he married from the place what happened. He did not know God. He starts having so many concubines and so many wives, which is not bad. 
But the concubines were too much. Now you are leaving your house, going out of your home. Concubines that you don't even know so many of them. He started living a life that was not of God. He died foolish. So this is when they say without God. Some things when your family say, you cannot marry to that tribe. They know their reason. Because some men you marry to them, or some women you marry to them, you will not know God. Because why? That family don't know God. Even the Bible will tell you. When Sarah, Isaac, all of them, Abraham, he said, I want my son to marry from this particular family. Because he knows when he married from this particular family, he will continue retain, he will continue the things of God. But when somebody tells you don't marry, you say, no, this is my choice, our own time now. This is my choice, this is what I want, I will marry to the man that I want. You will go there, but you will not know God. So family don't know God. When you marry from that family, you yourself will endure into it, you will not know God. Your children will not go, know God. That's what happened to King Solomon. God said, I don't want you. He left the word of God and married there. What happened? He, he, he forgets about the things of God. All his wisdom was just useless. Then after marrying now, he had so many wives then, concubines. So some things, when you read the word of God, it tells you, I don't want this to marry here. I don't want this to, to marry because God can open your eyes, you foresee. Your, even your own children, God will tell you, don't let them marry to that particular. The Holy Spirit speaks, don't let them marry there. Why? If you're daughter or your son married there, they will not know God. You will marry them, it will come to pass. They will not know God. That's what happened to this man. He said, then I applied myself to the understanding of wisdom and also of madness and fully, but I learned that this is true. We are chasing the wind. For which much wisdom comes, much sorrow. But the, but the, more, the, the more knowledge, the more grief. He said, much wisdom, much sorrow. When you continue to read about him, he said pleasure and meaningless. The things of life is pleasure and meaningless. He said, I said to myself, come now. I will test you with pleasure to find out what is good. But that also proved to be meaningless. Laughter, I said, is madness. And what does pleasure accomplish? I, I said, I tried trying myself with wine and embracing fully. My mind still guiding me with wisdom. I wanted to see what was good. For people to do under the heaven, doing the few days for their lives. I undertook great projects. I built houses for myself. I planted vineyard. I made garden and pigs and planted all kinds of, of fruit trees in them. I made uh, I made re reserve to to water groves of flourishing trees. I bought male and female slaves and had other slaves. Who were born in my house. I also own more, more apps and flocks than anyone in Jerusalem before me. I am miss silver and gold for myself and the treasure of kings and provinces. I acquired male and female singers and a harp as well. The delight of man's art, I became greater by far than anyone in Jerusalem before me. In all this, my wisdom stayed with me. I deny myself nothing, my eyes desire. I refused my heart no pleasure. My heart took delight in all my labor, and this was the reward for all my toil. Yet when I survey all that my hands has done and what I toiled to achieve, everything was meaningless. A chasing after the wind, nothing was gained under the sun. You take your time, read the word. Take your time, teach yourself. Everything he did, you see how many men he said he had? He has all these, but you can have all these if you don't know God is meaningless. This man was the wisest man, has everything, but he failed to follow, he failed to listen to God, he failed to do what is right. And his life on this earth was meaningless. Do we want to live meaningless life? No, we don't want to live meaningless life. That's why we need to key into the things of God. We need to know God. The little that I know now, I thank God for my life. And I will continue to pursue the things of God. It's all my weapon. It's all I have. Even the job, the food on the table, the clothing, the house. My weapon is God. Because without God, all those things it means to be meaningless. So we need to know God. He said, wisdom and folly are meaningless. He said, then I turned my thoughts. 
to consider wisdom and also madness and folly. What more can the king Sexon do than what has already been done? I saw that wisdom is better than folly, just as light is better than darkness. Light is better than darkness. The wise have eyes in their head, while the fully walks in the darkness. But I came to realize that the same fate overtake them both. Then I said to myself, the fate of the fool will overtake me also. What then do I gain by being wise? And I said to myself, this too is meaningless. For the wise, like the fool, will not long remembered. The days have already come, then both have been forgotten. Like the fools, the wise too must die. So many things on this earth is meaningless. So I hated life because the work that is done under the sun was grievous to me. All of it meaningless, a chasing after the wind. I ate all the things I had toiled for under the sun because I must leave them to the one who come after me. He said he fought, he, he bought all these things. But when you leave them, generation come, they will enjoy. So to him, life is meaningless. We fought so hard to build all these houses. Nobody says it's wrong. You can do all these things. But do not forget the homeless. Do not forget the orphanage. Do not forget the widow. Do not forget those who in need. You can stand in gap for a family, feed them for years. You can stand in gap to help with school fees. You can stand in gap to help. Whatever God can bless you, try for somebody to be happy. Put a smile in somebody's face. But a lot of people don't know. We see a lot of people, they say, oh, celebrity give their money, but they don't know God, they will go to heaven. No, they will not go to heaven. It has to come from the heart of God. It has to come from the heart of God. Now everything we do, we have to put it for the entire world to see. You won't give homeless the entire world to see. You do good in secret. God bless you openly. He says, so I hated myself. And who knows whether that person will be wise or foolish. He's saying now, when you build all these things, you leave it there. The person that is coming, you don't know whether wise or foolish. He says, yet... They will have control over all the fruit of my toil into which I have poured my effort and skin on, under the sun. This too is meaningless. So my heart began to despair over my toilsome labor under the sun. For a person may labor with wisdom, knowledge and skills and then they must leave all they own to another who had not toiled for it. This is too, this is too meaning, meaningless and a great misfortune. What do people get for all the toil and anxious striving in which, with which they labor under the sun? All their days, their works is grief and pain. Even at night, their minds do not rest. This is too meaningless. A person can do nothing better than to eat and drink and find satisfaction in their own toil. This, is, this too I see from the hand of God. For without him, we can eat or we can eat or find employment. To the person who pleases him, God gives wisdom. So you listen to this. It says a person can do nothing better than to eat and drink and find satisfaction in their own toil. This too, I see, is from God. It's from the hand of God. 25, it says, for without him, we can eat or find enjoyment. To the person who pleases him, God gives wisdom, knowledge, and happiness. But to the sinner, he gives the tax of gathering and storing up wealth to hand it over to the one who pleases God. This too is meaningless, a chasing after wind. So he's saying some people will fight so hard, build their houses, build everything where you don't know God. Everything that we do, it pleases God. He said, we, to the person who pleases God, to you that pleases God, God gives you wisdom. He gives you knowledge and gives you happiness. But to the sinner, he gives them tax to gather and store up their wealth to hand it over to the one who pleases him. This too is meaningless. God can do many things. 
Because he placed you on this earth. He made us all different. He made you tall. He made you rich. He made you have money. But at the same time, have you tried to go out to help the poor or the needy? Have you tried to even help a family? All of a sudden you hear, oh, that person died, but all the money, somebody died in America, all the money, all the insurance, they took it, take it to the orphanage. That's what he's saying. You will suffer when you don't care about all of them. When the death come, you will die. Nobody will even be, be, will be able to understand whether you have life insurance or not. Somebody from nowhere will understand, maybe the office. They will just take it and say, well, since we don't know the family, since there is no beneficiary, since there is no second name, since there is no first name, since he didn't put nobody's name in this uh, life insurance, we don't have no choice. Let's take it to the orphanage. Let's take it to the homeless. Other people will enjoy because you've been greedy. You don't want to share. Everything in life is meaningless, but we have to own God and to highest esteem. People don't know the things of God. I just want to encourage somebody today. Hold God to high esteem. He said it. He said there is everything. There is time for everything. And a season for every activities under heaven. People don't know all these things. You won't want to do something that is not of you. Everything under heaven. When you want to do something, have you prayed over it? Have you asked God? He said, this is the time for everything and a season for every activity under the heaven. A time to be born, a time to die. Everything on this earth, he put it there. A time to tear down, a time to leave. He said, what do workers gain from their toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on the human race. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart. In the human act yet. No one can foretell what God has done from the beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for people than to up to be happy and to be good while they live. That each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in their toil. This is the gift of God. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing can be taken from it. God does God does it so that people will fear him. Whatever he has already been and what will be, what will has been before and God will call the past to account. And I saw something else under the heaven. In the past judgment, wickedness was there. In the, in the place of justice, wickedness was there as well. I said to myself, God will bring into judgment both the righteous and the wicked. For there will be a time for every activities and a time to judge every deed. We need to understand all that. I also said to myself, as for humans, God tests them so that they may see that they are like the animal. Surely the fate of human being is like that of the animal. The same fate await them both. As one dies, so dies the other. All have the same breath. Human have no advantage over animals. Everything is meaningless. All go to the same place, come from the dust. To the dust and it all returns. Who knows if the human spirit rises upward and if the spirit of the animal goes down into the earth. So I saw that there is nothing better for a person than to enjoy their work because that is, that is their lot. For who can bring them to see? What will happen after death? We are not better. We came from dust. Everyone, the dog dust, human being dust. So when somebody wants to stand in their life and say they're better than you, they are not. Because all of us will go back to that dust. When somebody die well, they will tell you they burn their body, they keep their bodies, nothing. Dust, we came, dust, we go. Dust we came, dust we go. So we need to understand all this. He said again, I look and saw all the oppressors that was taking place under the sun. I saw tears of oppressed and they have no comfort. Power was on the side of their oppressors and they have no comforter. And I declare that the dead, the dead who has already died are happier than the living. Who are still alive, better than both is the one. 
who has never been born, who has not seen the evil that is done under the sun. And I saw, saw that all toils and achievements spring from one person, envy of another. This is too meaningless, chasing after wings. Fools fold their hands and destruction destroy themselves. Better one handful with tranquility than two handful with toil and chasing after wind. Again, I saw something meaningless under the sun. There was a man all alone. He had, he had neither son nor brother. There was no end of his toil, yet his eyes were not content with his wealth. For whom am I toiling, he asked. And why am I depriving myself of enjoyment? This too is meaningless, a miserable business. He said two are better than one because they have a good return of their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them, help them up. Also, if two lies down together, they will keep warm. But one can, but one, but now can one keep warm alone? Though one may, may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of, of three stand is quickly than broken. It's a better a poor but wise youth than an old but foolish kid who no longer knows how to, how to heal a warning. The youth may have come from prison to the kinship or he may have been born in poverty within his kinship. I saw all that. All who live and walk under the sun follow the youth, the king's success. There was no end to all the people who were before them. But those who came later were not pleased with the success. This too is meaningless and chasing after wing. So he's trying to tell us many, many things that we do. When we read um, Exiliasis, he will give you many. So the last one in this session that we are going to read, fulfill your vow to God. This is the last one. He said, guide your step when you go to the house of God. Go near to listen rather to offer the sacrifice of fools. Do not, he said, do not know that they do wrong. Do not be quick with your mouth. Do not be hasty in your heart to alter anything before God. God in heaven and you are on earth. So let your words be few. A dream comes when they, there are many there, there are many cares and many works mark the speech of a fool. When you make a vow to God, do not delay to fulfill it. People that will come, I will build the church, I will do this for the pastor. At the end of the day, you, you, your word, you cannot even say your word. Oh. So he said, when you make a vow to God, do not delay to fulfill it. He has no pleasure in fools. Fulfill your vow. It is better not to make a vow than to make one and not fulfill it. Do not let your mouth lead you into sin. People that lies, lies and lies and lies, and do not protect to the temple messenger. My vow was a mistake. You cannot come back and tell God, that vow that I made is a mistake. When you stand in the presence of God, when you make a vow, you have to fulfill that vow. vow. Don't make it too longer. If you say, when you stand to make a vow, Father Lord, I just won't buy one clock. That clock is like $10, it's easy. You make sure you buy the clock at the end of the time. Don't go give a vow that bigger than you that you cannot afford, then you lie. He said, do not let your mouth lead you into sin and do not protect to the temple message. messenger. My vow was a mistake. Why should God be angry at what you say and destroy the work of your hands? Much dreaming and many works are meaningless. Therefore, fear God. So let's fear God. If you don't know God, start knowing God today. If you don't know God, I want to encourage you. Look for a Bible-believing church. Look for where you can surrender all your wrongdoing and start knowing God. It shall be good. It shall be well with you. He said, riches are meaningless. If you see the poor oppressed in this in this district, injustice and right deny, do not be surprised at short things. For one official is eyed by a higher one, and over them both are other, are others higher still. The increase from the land is taken by all. The king himself profit from the field. Whoever loves money never has enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with their income. This too is meaningless. 
as good as good as goods increase so do those who consume them and what benefit are they to the owners except to to feast their eyes on them the sleep of a laborer is sweet whatever they eat little or much but as for as but as for the rich their abundance permit them not to sleep no sleep i have seen a grievous evil under the sun wealth wealth ordered to the to the aim of its owners or wealth lost through some misfortune so that when they have when they have children there's nothing left for them to inherit everyone comes naked from their mother's womb and as everyone comes so they depart they they, they take nothing from the, their toy that they can, they can carry in their arms you came naked you go naked there's nothing you take to heaven clothes shoes all those people that they can dress go put them in grave you dress them you put them they cannot go there the body the soul gone the death is there that close will got him and live there so nothing you came with you came naked as you are born naked you go back naked that's what the bible says but now when people dress they won't dress them dress why are you dressing somebody dress them so that's from the word anyway i cannot liberate on that too much he said this is too grievous evil as everyone comes so they depart and what do they gain since they toil from the wind all their days they eat in darkness with great frustration affliction and anger we have time you read the word you read the word you read the word you see what the word will tell you it help you to even to even change your life he said and this is too a very serious problem people leave this world no better of them when they came all their hard work is for is nothing like walking for the wind throughout their lives they live under a cloud frustrate discouraged and angry even so i have noticed one thing at least that is good it is good for people to eat drink and enjoy their work under the sun during the short life god has given them and to accept their lot in life and it is a good thing to receive wealth from god and the good health to enjoy it to enjoy your work and accept your your lot in life this is indeed a gift from god god keeps short people so busy enjoying life that they they, they take no time to to bruise over the past so lastly he said there is there is another serious strategy i have seen under the sun and it weighs heavily on humanity god gives some people great wealth and honor and everything they could they could ever want but then he doesn't give them the chance to enjoy these things they die and someone else even a stranger ends up enjoying their wealth this is meaningless as a sickening tragedy the reason why that is happening because when you are greedy he give you everything but at the end of the day, you never enjoy. Some people tell you, oh, you work for this, you build this house, you get shoes, but you never enjoy it. A man might have a hundred children and live to be very old, but if he finds no satisfaction in life and doesn't even get a chance, a decent barrier, it will, it will have been better for him to be born dead. His birth will have been meaningless and he will have ended in darkness. He wouldn't even have had a, a name and he will never have seen the son or known of his existence yet he will have had more peace than in growing up to be the unhappy man he might have he might live a thousand years thousand years twice over but still not find contentment and since he must do he must die like everyone else well that that's that's the, that's what what's the, the use all people spend their their lives searching for food, but they never seem to have enough. So are wise people really better off than fools? Do, do poor people gain anything by being wise and knowing how to act in front of others? Enjoy what you have rather than desiring what you do not have. Just dreaming about nice things is meaningless, like chasing the wings. Everything has already been decided. It was no long ago what what each person will be so there is no no use urging with god about your destiny the more works you speak the more words you speak the less they mean so what good are they 
in the few days of our meaningless lives, we know how our days can be best spent. Our lives are like shadow. Who can tell what will happen on the earth after we are all gone? Praise the Lord. So we are, we are, we are done with this preaching today. I just want to encourage I just want to encourage someone today to give your life to Christ. When you look at Revelation 3, 7, it says, Because you say, I am rich, and I have become wealthy, and I have need of nothing, and do not know that you are, you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Not because you are rich, and you, you have need for nothing. There is something we all have need for. I want to encourage somebody today. Life without God is meaningless. No matter how your life, no matter what you have gained, no matter what you have, we have to we have to live with God. We have to live with God. We have to do the things of God. We have seen many have many have gone before time. They don't have the, the chance to give their life to Christ. They don't have the chance to able to speak to God. They don't have the chance to speak or surrender their life. But we have the opportunity to surrender our life to Christ. So I want to encourage somebody today. As you are healthy, you are able to move. You are able to do things. Please, surrender all. Know God. Life without God is meaningless. Let's try to know the things of God. Let's go our way. Whatever religion, it don't matter. As long as you know God. That's the most important thing. As long as the God we call the, Fa the Almighty Father where they ever, I beg in the name of God. I just want to encourage somebody out there. When the people say, I beg. This one, we need to come out now. Because the world has turned to something different. When I look at the violences in the world, it breaks my heart. See younger children dying for no reason. You see all these places. Somebody will just say, I'm, te I'm testing a gun. You don't know where that gun will land. Will land. So Russia, Ukraine. People have left their place to go. You left a, a home that you have built years. You left a shop that you, you had. You left all this that we are reading about exiliasis is what happened in, in Ukraine. People left places, houses that they, they, they knew all their life. Their children, this is my house that I'm going to live and die. They left that ground. Now they are going different places, begging what to eat. Places that they don't know about. Now they are going, they're starting another life that they don't know what to eat, what to wear, they don't have. Some people are out there now looking for what to eat, what to wear. It's all just about life. Because we don't know the future tomorrow. We don't know what will happen. That's why we need to hold ourselves. <coughs> we need to love one another. The love we need to give. Whatever you can help. You see the life of Ukraine. You will feel so sorry for them. They left a home that some of them, grandmother, grandchildren have grown in that land. That's all they know. They know how to go in and out to look for what to eat. Now, a, 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 a demon that call himself Satan have entered into somebody and turned to a demon for the entire world, killed so many into innocent souls. Now they are somewhere else. What a world. What a life. If we are looking at all these things, you look the, the history of, of, of Florida, the flood that came there, so many houses. <clears throat> we look at that. We look in the incident of, of, of Nigeria. Look what happened in Korea. People in Nigeria, people in church, look what happened. You go to Korea, you go so many places, things are happening. If our eyes cannot open now to know that God needs us, well, then we are late. Our eyes need to open to know that God really wants all of us. We need to stand and fight against the devil. We need to stand and fight against the thing that is happening in the world. He's calling our attention. I am here. You think God cannot stop the fight in, 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 in Russia? He's able to go there and fight and stop that in heaven. He can stop that instantly. 
God is able. All these men that are having strong head like Pharaoh, all of them, God able to intervene. These are things that is showing us. Let's see what happened to Pharaoh. He make his heart at them. But we'll see what happened to him. It's the same all of them that are fighting. Those who are making innocent, killing innocent souls for their untimely deaths. God is ready to deal with them. But when? After many souls have gone. God is able to stop many things. But he's bringing our attention to, to him. He said, where are you guys? Have you have the world forgetting about me? They will call crusade. They will call many things. You will see many people will not go. But if they say now, this is a crop. They want thousands of people. You see the crop. Alcohol, many things is happening. You will see how many people will go. But when you call for the things of God, it's less people that will come and listen. Many people will not listen. And this word are vital. We need them. We need them in our soul. We need to listen to the word of God. It's very important. If you don't know God, I am pleading today. Please find a way out to know God. Do the things of God. Apply them in your daily lives. We have so many people that need us. Because we don't know God, we don't care. Even the beggar, we don't care about them. Even the homeless, we don't care. You will see them and pass by them. But when you know God, you will know that when you eat, somebody needs to eat by you. If even you have a sense you want to share, what will come on your mind is sharing. But when you don't know God, you don't want to share. You'll be keeping that money. Somebody else will die. Just can't enjoy that. So I want to encourage somebody today. Please, surrender. Repent. Repent from your own ways. Know God. When you know God, it shall be well with you. I have come to today's ending. I want to encourage viewers that have joined today. I want to encourage you to more join our Sunday service. It shall be well with you. It's going to be grand. We are still going to talk about repentance. We are talking about the um, um, the things of God. That's all we talk. Give your life to Christ. We talk more about repentance. We want everybody to know the word. So we talk more about the word. We don't talk about um, prosperity because... Prosperity comes after you know God. I believe when you know God, when they talk in terms of prosperity, money will come. You will get money. You will get all those things. But if you don't know God, you say, if even you are full of money in your hands, it's meaningless. But when you know God, he will bless you. He bless the poor. He bless the rich. He bless us according to the riches of our glory. When you know God, he will bless you. He might not give you elaborate money, but he will give you something. That you yourself, you will be happy. It's peace within yourself. You will tell yourself, I'm not rich. I'm not richer. I'm not wealthy. I don't have too much money like the people that have all the money. But what God has blessed me, I am happy. That's the, the, that's the type of rich I want. I don't want the one that is so much, I am worried. You cannot sleep. According to what Exiliasis says, you cannot sleep. And at times you die, all that money go to somebody else. I want something everybody will be able to benefit while I'm on earth. If I make a cent, I want everybody to be part of that cent. Whatever I make, I want somebody to enjoy. So even though I'm gone, I know I played a lot of impact in, in somebody's life. So I want to encourage everyone today. When you don't know God, it's difficult when you know God. When you know God mentally, you refuse to apply it. God is waiting for you. But when you don't know him, it's totally different again. But I want to encourage somebody to know God. You will see the great difference. So I thank everyone today that are in this forum. Leonie Smith, thank you. Mr. Gaima, thank you. Philip, thank you. Our ritual mentor, thank you, Daddy, for joining. Tambay Ambasu, thank you. God bless you, sir. Thank you to Andrew. I already said thank you. I said thank you to almost everyone. Those who I'm unable to see. Thank you for joining today. God bless you. I encourage you to join us tomorrow um, 10 a.m. for our Sunday service. I know you'll be blessed. And I want you to not only be a hearer of the world today, but a doer of the world. And viewers all over the world that I'm unable to see, my gratitude to you. Thank you so much for joining the forum. And not only joining the forum, I want to encourage everyone, do not only be a hearer, according to what James say, but a doer of the word. 
when you hear the word of God, not only to hear it, then when you go, you sit, apply it in your life, apply it to everyone. Now, we talk life without God is meaningless. If you have a lot of money in a bag, if you don't have God with you, it's meaningless. People might not understand, but I know from my own perspective, I know what I'm talking about. I don't know. When you sleep every day, you wake up without praying. I don't know how you feel. We will pray in this house. We even look at ourselves we're looking. If even the sleep is in our eyes, we still pray. I will lay down sleeping and see myself pray. That's how it's supposed to be. You need to have conversation with God every day. You can't go just go lay down in bed and sleep. You have to talk to God every day. That's our life. So I want to encourage somebody. It's not easy. When you start knowing God, the devil will drag you back. But still, enjoy yourself in. Fight very hard. Try to know God. The Bible is a, is a book that is not easy to just open and read. But when you know the Bible, when you know the word, it's powerful. You will like the word. When you know how to read the word and you search the Bible, you search the word to know more. Wisdom will come. You will know more about the word. So I want to encourage everyone today. Those who have not given their life to Christ, surrender all to God. It shall be well with you. It's not easy. When you are a new convert to know God, it's not easy. The devil will drag you back to the world. But I tell you something today. When you are a new convert, you give your life to Christ. It shall be well with you. Everything will be fine. You might not be the wealthiest man, but God will make a way where it seems to be no way. We, we need to live a life of righteous. He said, even the righteous, the wicked, he will judge all of us for our ways. But before you be unrighteous and go in hell, be righteous and see what God will judge you for tomorrow. So I want to encourage you to give your life to Christ. It shall be well with you. Say, Father, I have lived my life for myself, but I have chosen a new life, which is the life of today. The life that I've passed. But I've chosen a new life, which is the life that I'm living now. I know I've lived a worthless life, whatever life I've lived. Jesus Christ, you have died for me. Now I want to live my life for you. To my last day till you come back in Jesus' name. You sit down, when you read this prayer, you look for a church and go there and surrender all. And it shall be well with you. So thank you for everyone that is here today. God bless you. And thank you for the time spent today. And do not forget to share the word. Do not forget to share the video too. Everyone that celebrate today, happy birthday. God bless you. May God open your eyes to know Christ. May God open your eyes to know him before the end of this world. Remember, you came naked, naked you go. So the things of the world, let the things of the world don't fool you. Let the things of God filled in you. When you have God, you have love. So thank you for everyone today. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for this group today. I thank you for this gathering today. I commit everyone that is here today, Lord, that wherever they are, there is no distance in there is no distance in blessing, neither prayers. Bless them as they have come today to the riches of your glory. Come and have your way in their lives, in the life of their children. Change every attitude or character in them in the name of Jesus, Lord. Bless the homes where they live. Send your angels to go there and guide them wherever they are. We pray for children worldwide, Lord. That, Lord, you will be their angel guardian. Pray for the vulnerable ones that, Lord, you will, you will take care of them. You say your name is a strong tower. Every righteous one in it, they are safe. Keep us in your, in your tower. Keep us in your bunker, Lord, that the enemy will not be able to see us, to shoot us, or to do whatever. We commit the entire world into your hands, that Lord, we pray for your intervention now in the name of Jesus. I pray for those who are here today, that they will not only be a hearer of the word, but a doer of the word. Cover everyone with the precious blood of Jesus. I come with homes. You say marriage is a sacred thing to you, Lord, and you created marriage. I come with the homes that are going from one point to another, that don't, that don't understand each other. And Lord, you will dwell in those homes and make it perfect. 
The ones that already have, you continue to bless them. I pray, Lord, for wife and husband that are seeking to have a wife. Bless them with wife and husband that reverence you. We pray for those who are seeking for the fruit of the womb. As you bless Sarah, you bless Anna. Lord, come and bless them with the fruit of the womb. You say children are a gift from you. The womb is blessed. Come and have your way in, in our lives. Come and have your way in those who are seeking for different opportunity. Come and bless them today. Let the word spoken today be a light in their life. Let the word spoken today change somebody. Father Lord, I thank you, Yesu, for your presence here today. I thank you for blessing and answer today all prayers. I commit today as we are ending today, wherever they are, let your grace be upon them. I pray. None of us will die prematurely. We will not die untimely. We will not die by violences. Gunshots. A stray bullet will not kill us. Accidents will not kill us. Father Lord, every deadly sickness will not kill us. Cancerous, diabetes, anything that is, of, that is not of you will not kill us. We pray whatever food that we ate on the table with the enemies, Father Lord, will not be harmful to us. I pray Lord, COVID-19, Delta variant, Omicron will not kill us. Anyone who gather for us, they will scatter for us. You say light and darkness will not compress. Every darkness that they have gathered for us will scatter. You will expose all of them in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray every altar of witches, altar of occultic, altar of COVID, those who are gathered for this generation today, will scatter their plan in the name of Jesus. Everyone that is planning today, to use God to use God to kill innocent souls. Let that God go back to them in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, I cover everyone today with the precious blood of Jesus. As they took time to come to this forum, may their blessing meet them. May their family enlarge. May they know you. May they know your word. I cover everyone today with the precious blood of Jesus. Father, I thank you for this day. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, so shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you everyone for today. God bless you. I encourage you. You come and join us tomorrow morning. It shall be well with you. Have a wonderful night. Shalom. We love you all. Bye bye. YouTube, do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Shut the notification button. Whenever I upload a video, you'll be the first to receive it. Have a wonderful one. Shalom. Bye bye.